Well, right here in this box is another Ferret Instruments inductive timing light. This one has a note. I believe the cable that connects to the spark plug wire is bad. Let's take a look at it. Well, there it is right there in all of its glory. Let's just take a peek at this thing real quick. This is the Illuminator 84. Pretty nice unit, probably from the 80s. And check this out, still has all the original paperwork with it. So here's a toll-free number, probably not even in use anymore. There is the original registration card. Probably ought to fill it out and send it in one day. And how advanced measurement works, changing advanced settings, limited product warranty. Something's crossed out there. They must have moved at some point. And it has a one-year warranty on it. It's probably about up by now, I would say. And then some instructions. If you need help figuring this thing out, you can take a quick peek at those. Just pause them as necessary. And there you go. And we'll just take a quick peek at the cord that the customer believes is the problem. And there was tape on it. I already took the tape off. And I believe that the customer might be correct. There's a couple of melted spots. And right there is probably the main problem. Look at those leads. All of the insulation has melted off of at least one, two, three, maybe four leads. And chances are those might be shorting together right there. Now, like I said, the customer did have this wrapped up in tape. I went ahead and de-taped it so I could see the damage before I go any farther. So I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and lop this cord off probably right back here where it's still good. And then I do see a melt spot with one lead, so I'm going to have to lop that portion off as well. Then down here just a bit farther is another melted spot. These things do not get along with hot manifolds. The rest of the cord seems to be pretty good with the exception of this one little tiny spot right there. Can't even hardly focus on it, it's so small, but I think it'll be just fine right there. Okay, so I did go ahead and lop off the burned portion. And so I'm thinking I'm going to have to make this thing, it's going to be about a foot shorter because I'm going to go ahead and stagger these leads so there's not one big blob of heat shrink right in the middle. So I'll splice one lead here, another one there, three, four, and five, because there's only five leads in this cord and it's not shielded in any way. So I think if I just go ahead and do a staggered splice and then go ahead and put a piece of heat shrink over the top of this, I think it's going to be just fine. All right, well, all the splices have been made. I have not applied the heat shrink tubing yet. So I'm going to put one piece of heat shrink across each splice. Then I actually have two pieces of heat shrink, one to go across this and then one to go farther across it once everything is said and done. Then we'll actually hook this thing up and see if it works. Oh my God, really right now? Well, somehow the recording of me shrinking the leads did not work, but there they are. They're all shrunk more or less the same length. So normally in this situation, I'm just going to go ahead and add some wraps to it like that. Then we'll put the heat shrink over it and call it a day.
Well, there it is, all heat shrunk up and ready to go. I probably could have used three pieces, one to just go from here to here, and then a second one here, and then a third one here like I did, but I think this is going to be just fine, much better than melted wires together. So hopefully this will take care of the customer's problem. So it's about midnight tonight. I'm not going to go out and hook it up on a car, wake up all the neighbors. So tomorrow morning, I'll go ahead and hook it up and we'll give it a test. So as far as I can tell, they're only using three out of these five leads in this five lead cable. The white lead and the green lead right here both go through this magnet wire through this inductive pickup coil on this ferrite core right here that actually picks up the inductive kick of the spark. The brown lead is soldered to this one green lead that goes up and just acts as a ground or a shield to prevent extraneous RFI from getting into this area, I do believe. So that's it. I'm not seeing the red lead or the black lead in use anywhere here. Anyhow, I just thought I'd tear this thing apart and see what it looks like inside. Now you know. And FYI, because I know someone's gonna ask me what is the value of that capacitor it is a 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor or a 103. And it does say KHM215. That is the only nom nomenclature on it. Possibly ASC or RSC. I can't quite tell. Let's see if anything is on the back side of it. And no, nothing's on the back side. So. If you need help with this capacitor, KHM215, and it is a 103, which is a 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor. I know it's going to be kind of hard to see, but I do have this connected to uh, one of the spark plugs, and I obviously have a display on it, which I believe is showing me the RPM. There it goes, idling down. And so if I go and turn the light on, you can see that the light is indeed flashing the cameras, causing it to uh, have that weird uh, shutter effect. But uh, I, I can get it down here and uh, it is flashing and I do see a mark on the harmonic balancer down here that it is keeping perfectly in line. And now uh, I can actually adjust with the buttons on the front of this thing, I can adjust the advanced how I want my light to show. So as far as I can tell, this thing is working absolutely perfectly. I uh, hope you enjoyed a little uh, quick repair video on fixing your uh, melted wire that you dragged across the manifold too many times. Anyhow, that's it. Gonna ship this thing uh, back to my customer. All right, timing light is packed back up in the box, ready to ship. All the paperwork is down there that I showed you on the video. And a uh, very nice tight fit, nothing's loose in here. I went ahead and wrapped everything up really good and it's going back in the customer's original box. And he has some uh, paper packing to go in there as well. And I'm probably just gonna add some extra bubble wrap and get it shipped back to this guy who I believe is in Gillette, Wyoming. Anyhow, I appreciate you watching. Quick little repair on the Ferret Instruments. I think this one was the Illuminator 84 if I'm not mistaken. But anyhow, there you go. Ready to go back. Everyone have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.